This is from uh, Eddie, and he took this at a park in the Adelaide Hills in uh, Australia. Wow, in Adelaide. Cool. Long exposure. I like that. You know, we're getting that that cool look. You might have used an ND filter. It's a leading line, uh, you know, composition because the edges of the stream just kind of lead your eye. You know, it's a beautiful kind of still, not still life, but it's an environmental photograph, like a painting. It has that painting look. And um, you just, Sue said, I just stepped out the back door. <laughs> That's amazing. Keep those cougars away. Uh, anyway, you know, photography, where did photography come from? It grew out of painting, right? And so composition, we should go back to the roots of composition and painting to look at our photographs. Some of the best photographers I know have done that. They really spent a lot of time, like Joey L., Bob Holmes, they spent a lot of time looking at paintings and working that into their composition. So you've done a good job on that. It's, um, you know, basically telling the story of this lovely little stream. The water's kind of brown, which tells me that it's rained recently. Uh, that's something I, I noticed because I look out my from our upper room and I can see the ocean is very brown, which is because the Carmel River runs right into it. And it's brown because of so much rain. It's literally turning the whole part of the ocean there brown. Anyway, good one. All right. And here's one from our good friend, Christopher Scott Carpenter. Always enjoy his work. Oh, why is it not coming up? Christopher. We'll see if this is New York. Is it Mexico? Where in the world are you? I'm thinking we're in New York. I don't know why it's coming up, so I'm going to just bring it up on Facebook okay. instead. But here is the image. Okay, interesting. Chinese New Year. Um, you know, I, I'm just going to say, because I've seen a lot of your work and I'm very impressed with your work, this doesn't pop for me. And I'm not sure why that is. I'm just thinking what what could be done to make it pop. Um, you know what? It's probably oh, now the, it's... it's probably the same recommendation that I've given, which is shallower depth of field, lower angle. Somehow seeing this at eye level does it just becomes like okay, here's this person. I would say drop down on your lower angle. I mean, it's again, it's the same deal. Something is larger than life. Let it be larger than life. It'll also clean up your background. So that would be the, the recommendation. I would shallower depth of field, go down on your knee and see what happens. You know, our theme for today. It's, uh, you know, it's weird how this happens, isn't it, Jared? Like we have this. Yeah, I find myself, you guys present some similar things, you know, and it's like, give it a shot. Let's try that out and see what happens. Again, tell yourself, hey, what other angles could I capture this from? And going, you know, possibly up high would be interesting because that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's the head of a big, long uh, monster, what do you call it, dragon type thing, and there's probably a whole body that follows behind it, which would be interesting too. You know, it's it's just something to try, but I've got, I try the low angle. All right, uh, here's another really interesting one that I found fascinating. Um, just kind of this little peak oh, yeah. of driving through the desert. Uh, let me find the caption that came with it. Uh, Dune bashing in the Dubai desert. Yes, it was a bumpy ride. Interesting how it's so dark. Why is it that dark inside? You know, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Okay, the answer is you're exposing for the outside. So, of course, the inside's going to be quite dark. Um, you know, that's cool. The silhouettes. 
it's a, again a sort of a painting type of thing, right? And this is this is a cool thing because you're you're not really trying to depict a photojournalistic type shot, although that could easily fit into a series. But it's just really sort of an impressionistic type of look at, at what's going on here. And you get the feeling of a lot of motion. You can see that medallion is kind of on its angle. And the whole shot is, yeah, the whole shot is kind of on an angle. So that's a very interesting photograph. I like it. Good one. I like the silhouette and I like the, the feeling of speed and motion. Cool one. Okay. And this is from Isaac and it's captioned uh, the it's Lumiere as a as a, as a plant. What was so that like again? the character Lumiere as a plant, like from the Beauty and the Beast. Oh, really? So yeah. they're commenting he looks like Lumiere. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And, you know, you got your shallow depth of field, which means that this character is standing out. You know, an interesting thing, Camille Seaman is a uh, Native American, amazing photographer. I've interviewed her and interviewed her for my book, Create. And her belief is that everything is alive. I actually subscribe to this. Everything is alive. You know, you can talk to trees and you'll feel something coming back. But she takes it even to, you know, things like icebergs and mountains have that life in them. And I believe that's true. So you're taking a portrait of this uh, character here. And that's something I find really interesting. Use it as a portrait opportunity. We're kind of essentially as photographers always capturing portraits. Everything we ever photograph is a portrait. Try that mindset next time you go out. But because I'm bringing this up because I feel like you've done that. You've given it life and you've given it a name and that's part of the portraiture. So bravo on that. And, and for the rest of the audience, something to just keep in mind. Just I'm shooting a portrait no matter what it is. I don't care if it's a pencil a broccoli leaf or a tree or a bush or a cat or a dog or a building, you're capturing a portrait. What do you do when you capture a portrait? You're trying to get the personality across, right? That's what good portraiture does. More than just, okay, here's the person's face. So try that out. And anyway, I'm again saying this because I feel like you've done this. So well done. I guess we have time for a couple more. What else we got? Yeah, Scott also wanted, uh, or Christopher Scott Carpenter, he, he wanted to see what your thoughts were on this one as well. This is ah. the other photo that he posted. It's um, uh, obviously these are uh, Hasidic Jew yeah. uh, school bus and some boys on their way to school. Yeah, you've got some good elements there. You know, you've, you've done what Bob Holmes says, which is try to get their feet up. Yeah, good one. Isn't that funny how that just that little bit right there makes such a difference? If imagine their feet feet on the ground flat and no space between them, it makes a different photograph. So we get the feeling of this motion. I like it. I think it's a really cool story that, you know, these kids are going into the bus like every other kid that, you know, rides a bus. And there's emotion there. There's you know, think about it. Motion. What do you do when you get motion and you put an E in the front of it? Emotion. Emotion is often portrayed through motion, which is why, you know, also these other points I've been making about angles gives you a different emotion because you've, you've added, you've, you've used your emotion to, to get a different vantage point. Anyway, that's a good one. I would also recommend, however, just to make this even more interesting, a low angle. Why? Because it will accentuate these kids. It'll also clean up the background a little bit. We got a little bit of a competition with the school bus, but with a lower angle, 
it's going to get a, you know, we might even get some of the sky. I'm not saying you have to lie on the ground, but drop down. You know, John Todd, sports photographer, did something really interesting. He said he goes out in the backyard and he just practices with his camera, switching. Like he did, he shoots with two, cam two cameras, two different lenses, shooting one-handed, switching cameras back and forth. And he just drills in the backyard like you would drill basketball. Drill this. Drop to your knee. Stand up. Stand tall. Hold the camera up high because sometimes you want a really high angle, right? Try these different things. Like make your body do, you know, just like everything else, there's muscle memory involved. And you don't have to think about it. You go, bam, on your knees, boys. That's out of the YouTube's, YouTube song, right? Uh, you know, just think of that. Bam, high angle, you know, various different things. Really try to practice those things because you, this actually may work even better with a high angle. I don't know, but I would capture both. And when you come back, you can check it out. Be really, really as, as versatile as you can. Be like a Swiss army knife with your camera. Okay. Think of that. That's my new coined phrase. Be Swiss, be a Swiss army knife with your camera. Cheers. All right, we got time for one or two more. Yep, I think we've got one more <laughs> that I've got here. So on let's... your knees, boy. I'm reading Bono's biography, autobiography. It's very interesting. By the way, I this highly is... recommend it. Mm -hmm. This is from Yale. I've seen this one. I really like that. Remind me, I'm going to make a comment about Bono's biography, autobiography. In a minute. Will do. Yeah, so cool. You know, with the reflections, that's really cool. A lot of geometry, a lot of symmetry, and uh, patterns. It's got all sorts of compositional tools in it. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it. And leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.